You're on CY Interview. I'm Chris Yandek, featured comics. Jay Bill seen us with me today on CY Interview. We welcome comedy superstar Gilbert Gottfried. His Dirty Joe Comedy Festival is coming to Las Vegas on October 15th and 16th. Gilbert, thanks so much for joining us on CY Interview. This is a real pleasure. How are you? Oh, thank you. Yeah, so just I, t- that, so, go ahead. that was an ad lib on my part. Where I just, <laughs> thank you. See, I very that that, that it, I, I really enjoyed the complexity of the answer. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> this is this is going to be wonderful. Uh, just to begin, um, and probably the most, maybe the most laughs in Steve interview history is going to be up there in the top three at least for sure. So just to begin, tell me about your upcoming Dirty Comedy Festival here in Las Vegas. Uh, it's a comedy festival, and it will be dirty. Uh, that, that's basically it. it. It doesn't, uh, you don't need to bring Stephen Hawking in to explain it. Well, we, okay. we, we, we thank you so much for having been here, and uh, it's been very descriptive and powerful, and um, yes, uh, uh, Chris, go on. I, um, I think I just sold a thousand tickets now. Yeah, you sold a thousand tickets. Unfortunately, not to your show. But uh, hey, look, yeah. somebody th- <laughs> so, somebody thanks you, Chris. Go ahead. Oh, this is so. Just you know, moving forward on. By the way, Chris, go ahead. Very good. Sorry. Uh, uh, so moving forward on that, what do you like doing when you come to Las Vegas? Oh no. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> See, see, you're you're waiting for like a prostitute answer. <laughs> no, actually, I wasn't. That now, was actually now, that now, was actually very say, genuine. This confuses me. Uh, <laughs> it's Las, Las Vegas. I mean, there's obviously a lot of hookers there, but it's not <laughs> legal in Las Vegas. Correct. Ah. Yeah, you have to you have to get out the perump. You've you've got to take a limo or an Uber or a, a a Hoover vacuum that you ride on or something, and you got to get yourself to Pahrump where it's legal. Cause cause there it's they they're all over the place hookers. They're like uh, they they wait by the elevators. I noticed that. Uh, like whenever I've done a show out there, it's like oh I'm a big fan. Uh, can I? Uh, can I come up and tell you what a big fan I am? And then it's like, uh, then they name their price. And, uh, but so they're all over the place, but it's illegal. Correct. And, and where it's the, I, I actually once went, this is, uh, I once went to the bunny ranch and I didn't actually get laid there. It was, uh, I, I was doing a comedy club. There and they had some tie-in. So I uh, now the Bunny Ranch is is where again? The Moonlit Bunny Ranch, Chris. That's where. Um, oh, I forget his name. Who passed away? That's about six hours, seven hours north, isn't it? Correct. Yeah. Dennis Hoff. Dennis Hoff. There, there it's legal. Correct. There, there it is legal. Certain counties in the in the state of Nevada, it's legal, and certain uh, counties in the state of Nevada, it's just hilarious. Okay, let, let let me get a pen and you'll name those counties. <laughs> uh, Gilbert Godfrey. Go ahead, Chris. I don't want to throw off your timing. You're doing so yeah. well. Do you have any Las Vegas memories, Gilbert, from your performing career here in Las Vegas and not in Carson City, Nevada, Dennis Hoffman, Life Buddy Ranch? No so, no. so that's Carson City. You want to jot down Carson City. C A R S O N City. Okay. I got it. <laughs> <laughs> I have no memories when I in in I mean no exciting to talk about memories in Las Vegas. And I always feel like Whenever that's one of those places when I'm at when I'm there, I always go. I okay. I'm in show business. I'm in Las Vegas. I should be having a wild time. Why aren't I? What 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 spot am I supposed to be at? Who am I supposed to call? 
that's going to make it a wild time out here. Yeah, my, my wild time in Las Vegas is usually in search of a laxative after too much to eat at the buffet, and uh, I, I, I find that I find that both exciting and relieving. Yes. <laughs> I, first time I went to Las Vegas, I I they I did some show somewhere where it was like a few days, and they gave me like. Three tickets for each day, breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Oh, my God. And that, that was my existence. I'd wake up in the morning, go have breakfast, go back to my room, wait around, look at the clock, and then when it hit lunch hour, I'd go down for lunch and then uh, wait for uh, dinner to be served. And that was, yeah, yeah. So talk about uh, constipation. It, uh, in Las Vegas, constipation can be an occupation. It can also be an occupational hazard if you're a, if you're a chaza, which, uh, as we learned in Scarface, is a pig that doesn't fly straight. Yeah. <laughs> hey, you, you know, this is something that gets me now that you bring up um, uh, Scarface. Do you realize how much protest... They would be nowadays, uh, well, with Scarface and Carlito's way of Al Pacino playing a Cuban and Al Pacino playing a Puerto Rican. And you know what? You, you, you bring up an, extra, an excellent point because one of the things, one, one of the few serious things at least I wanted to ask you about is cancel culture. And, um, you know, if I think about comedy over the last, I don't know how many years, let's go back to the 60s, there are three comedians who who I think are heroes of comedy, you're one of them, but who've come up against cancel culture. Lenny Bruce, of course, Andrew Dice Clay, if we go back a little more than 30 years ago, and you certainly. Um, what, what do you think that, and, and by the way, you know, some people think, oh, well, big deal, these are comics, whatever, cancel them. But somehow comedy is a leading indicator of where culture is. And when we come to the point where we can't laugh at ourselves or laugh at other people or we're afraid to make a comment, I think it tells us that the next step is, uh, you know, we get somebody with a bushy head hair and a bushy mustache called Stalin, and uh, all of a sudden the United States is uh, no longer the United States. Now, is what I'm saying too soon or is it true? Yeah, it, it's, well, the funny thing is, like, year, years ago, there was the book 1984, where Big Brother's watching us, and then in the 60s, around that time, oh, the uh, the government's watching us, but now it's everybody is watching everybody. It's like, it, it's it's not some secret organization, it's not like everybody's got an opinion Everyone, everyone wants to feel outraged and feel like they've done something. It's a, it's a very scary time. Has it, has it? I know it affected you. Actually, actually, you know, we didn't even have the the uh, the cancel culture term when you you went through your whole Michigan ten years ago. Uh, but. Uh, is it? Does it affect you to this day? Are you ever inhibited? I don't think you are, but are you ever inhibited when you're saying, well, I'm going to tell this joke, and you're like, you know what? I still want to keep working. Maybe I better not tell this joke. Has that happened to you? Oh, oh, it's, uh, it's definitely, nowadays I think twice, but I do it anyway. Uh, but it, it, it definitely goes through your head. Like, uh, oh, that word, is that word out? Is this sentence wrong? Are they going to misread this? Uh, oh, it's a, it's a very confusing time. Could 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 a young Don Rickles have existed today? I I don't think so. Yeah, because you know back then they they could laugh at that, and could, uh, and and it was understood that was a joke. Could Howard Stern have launched his radio career today in the way that he launched it, you know, whatever it was in the 1980s? Yeah, probably not. He probably would have had, like, you know, 
one thing he'd say, and then it would be uh, shut off the air before the show was. Uh, it would be like somebody would click the button and get it off the air. Here's here's what troubles me, Gilbert. Uh, uh, among other things, I mean, uh, uh, among my life and my personality traits, my relationships with people, and my general attitude. Besides those things troubling me, um, you know, I think of not just that everybody's watching everyone, but how arbitrary it is. For example. There was some uh, uh, actress who, I don't even know if you're allowed to say actress, maybe I have to say actor. Uh, I, I don't know if I can say she was a female actor. Maybe I just say a person who was an actor. Yeah, I maybe, maybe I can't use the past tense, or, I'm not quite or, sure. Or describe them as a them. A them, an organism, an organism. So anyway, th this this actress, this actress, made some comparison about. I think she was talking about having to get a. Va uh, she made some some comment about Republicans being treated like the Jews in Nazi Germany, and and the uh, studio she was working for in a movie. They, you know, hey, you 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 can't work here anymore. How dare you make that comparison? So. Of course, you know, Jerry Seinfeld, we had the soup Nazis, so I guess 30 years ago he'd be canceled, and I know some of your jokes would be canceled. And all Jewish people who have used gallows humor to attempt to get through trying times, we'd all be canceled. But then you have Prince Harry, who dresses up like a Nazi, wears a swastika, makes comments about Arab and Pakistani people, and he gets an interview with Oprah, and she doesn't even ask him about that. And then I, I think I heard that he's getting a hundred million dollar Netflix deal. How does that work? Yeah, there, there's no rhyme or reason to any of it. And uh, can I have his agent, please? Yeah, because uh, no, no, no fooling. No fooling. Uh, 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 a Billy Crystal uh, uh, moment. What was that? I'll have what he, what she's having. Yeah. No fooling. But um, what are your expectations uh, for what you're doing in Las Vegas? Do you think this this cancel culture will somehow curtail what you want to do? Or do you think a lot of people are going to say, screw this, I, uh, we can't live this way. Yeah, I, I, I want to hear some of the real gritty stuff. Uh, yeah, it, it, I, I think it, it's like... Um there was when Michael Richards got in trouble, there was one comedy club that said they put in a new law, a new rule in that club that if anyone uses uh, a certain word, uh, they'll be docked, you know, a certain amount of money. And I thought, rather than that, wouldn't you rather advertise we don't censor any of the comics. It might really offend you. It might get you angry. And that's like, to me, it's like going on a roller coaster that advertises, uh, well, we, we move very slowly. We don't make any sudden turns. We don't uh, make a, a steep drop. But, you know, it's like, no, you get on there to feel like you're going to get killed. Uh, I, I think that comedy provides a certain social steam outlet. It's almost like the steam coming out of a tea kettle so that society doesn't explode because people have impulses, they have feelings, they have things they don't want to say, they have thoughts that they're afraid to admit. And when you go into a comedy club or comedy show, the comic almost ch uh, channels certain type of things, and people are able to express it in a non-offensive way, or at least hopefully non-offensive, or if it is offensive, it's still cathartic, but it doesn't result in violence or something like that. I guess today we'd rather have less comedy and more people protesting in the streets and destroying things and taking over the Capitol. Well, like George Carlin said, it's the duty of a comedian to find out where the line is drawn and deliberately cross over it. That, that, that's a, a very good remembrance of a very great comic. Gilbert, one thing that always uh, I found curious, when you were younger, 
I don't know if anybody ever told you this. You look you looked a lot like Robbie Benson, and and <laughs> of, of course, Rob, you know Robbie Benson. That was like twenty thousand years ago with Christy McNichol, and I don't think anybody living today, except crip keepers like myself, probably remembers who they were. But I mean, you you were uh, you know you you were not unfortunate looking as uh, Alicia Silverstone said in Clueless. You're a nice looking guy and all. Sometimes certain people come to their transgressive comedy because of something very personal in themselves. Maybe they were an outcast. Maybe it was how they looked and all and so forth. What brought you to transgressive comedy? Oh, God knows. Uh, but uh, I, I, was, I was certainly not, not popular with uh, girls. I know that. And uh, I, I wasn't, yeah. I just, uh, I was a lousy student. I, uh, I couldn't play sports. Uh, I, yeah, it was just, you know, when you feel like just totally like, who the hell am I? <laughs> So instead of putting on a black co- uh, uh, a trench coat and going a Columbine route, you said, yeah. let's be transgressive with words. Uh, yeah. That, that's basically it. And, and, and by the way, this show may never hit air because I may be canceled for uh, saying that. You know, I may be canceled for the next thought I have. Yeah. It is, uh, it is, uh, these are interesting times to live in, but not in a good way. Uh, I do have a quick question before I throw it back to Chris. One of the, one of the great co- comedians who I always enjoyed, Sam Kinison. I, I wondered if you had any memories of, of being with Sam or working with Sam. Uh, one, the one thing that I, I remember is, uh, it's uh, both of us were hired uh, to be presenters on the Emmy Awards, and uh, and they were all afraid of what Sam was going to do. And this was around the time Pee Wee Herman was arrested in the porn theater, and uh, so I was doing joke. I went up there and started doing jokes, saying uh, I really sleep better at night knowing Pee Wee Herman's been arrested. If masturbation's a crime, I should be on death row. <laughs> <laughs> you got canceled for that, if I recall. Wasn't it true yeah. that on the East Coast your whole show went through, but on the West Coast yeah. it was censored yeah. and they yeah. apologized for what you said? I remember what that. What I'm most proud of is that they put a delay on because of me for a whole future. <laughs> I mean, so I was very proud of that one. Uh, but I remember running into uh, to uh, Tennyson at, at, at the end of the show, and he was cracking up because he said everybody was uh, watching him and worried what he'd say. So when he saw I was the one who, uh, who uh, got in trouble, uh, he loved it. Well, you, you know what? I don't. Th- I, I think uh, most people who know a little something about comedy, but you've been referred to as the comedian's comedian. But I think most people realize that you are uh, a true comic hero. But what I don't think a lot of people will contextualize that as you're really a person who stands up for uh, constitutional rights by way of exercise of one of that mo- those most precious freedoms, which is freedom of speech. And uh, I think you should be thanked for it, besides the fact that you're uproariously funny, but I think it takes a lot of chutzpah. More than that, it, it, it takes a lot of, uh, how could I say it in a non-cancelable way, testicular fortitude <laughs> to, uh, to be able to do that. And uh, with testicles that size, by now you should be popular with the girls. But I know you're married, so that probably doesn't marry, mean anything anymore. Chris? Um, Gilbert, what do you still enjoy about performing today? Uh, get, getting the check at the end of the night. <laughs> That's what I don't appreciate about taking people to dinner, but maybe we're different in that way. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. 
So, so, so in closing, of course, where you will be for your Dirty Joke Comedy Festival on October 16th and October 17th is downtown at the Plaza, which is right across the street from the famous Fremont Ex Street Experience. So if you're looking for material, there are plenty of different kind of freaks and show performers and all kinds of people right across Well, Chris, forget CY interview. We'll now be the slowest growing uh, uh, media outlet in Las Vegas. You just said there are freaks somewhere. Nobody is a freak. They're just human beings with differences. How dare you? <laughs> So, anyway, so, kid, go go on about the freaks, Chris. I'm sorry. So, yeah. so, so in closing, there'll be plenty of material for you downtown yeah. if you need stuff. Oh, so. oh and see, before I forget, also I should uh, mention I'm on Cameo. Uh, so if you want a video, uh, personalized video shout-out for me, go to cameo.com slash Gilbert Gottfried. And so you can basically wish... Everybody's grandmother a happy birthday. Uh yes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, I, I, I need an answering machine message from you. That that's the thing. That's that's yeah. that's what I need. This is Gilbert Godfrey. Jay is not available right now, and I'll be telling a dirty joke in a minute. <laughs> <laughs> do you have do you do you have last question before we wrap up, do you have like one dirty joke that you think just made your career help help stand it out or that you always go back to or that you just have fond memories well, of? Well, well, Chris, those of us who are Gilbert Godfrey fans know the joke that really saved him uh, after 9-11. Uh, Gilbert? I'm waiting. Yeah, the aristocrats. The ar the, the, yeah, the aristocrats. That's it. It's got to be the aristocrats. Yeah. That, that's where I, I made a joke about uh, September 11th, and uh, that's how I climbed out of it. Yeah, everybody started shouting. Oh, it was the Friars Club, wasn't it, Gilbert? And yes, everybody yes. started shouting, uh, too soon, too soon. And so he went into the dirtiest joke known to mankind, told it in the dirtiest way possible, and uh, that saved him. That may have, it, it's interesting. That may be a recipe for cancel culture. How to get out of cancel culture? Go, uh, go even worse. Double, triple down, quadruple down. <laughs> yeah, and and when they yelled too soon, I thought they meant I didn't take a long enough pause. But <laughs> 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 I'm choking here. You need to get employment liability and employment I'm protection dead. liability insurance. You're going to kill me. Uh, who, where, who's your lawyer? Let me see if I can make a claim. <laughs> Gilbert Godfrey killing this morning. Uh, again, one of the true comic heroes coming to Las Vegas soon for a dirty joke festival, and it will be dirtier than two pigs fell in the mud. And uh, we thank you so much for being with us, Gilbert. Yeah, we hope you come back. And uh, anything you'd like to say in closing that perhaps uh, will get us completely censored? Uh, all, all I can say, once again, I have to promote cameo.com slash Gilbert Godfrey. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and October 15th and October 16th here at the Plaza Hotel and Casino in downtown Las Vegas is Dirty Joe Comedy Festival. Please buy a ticket, and then tell ten other people to buy a ticket as well. And 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 give to charity, and 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 uh, send your mother a gift on Mother's Day, and uh, insult the person who lives next door to you. <laughs> <laughs> so for so for a comedy legend, Gilbert Godfrey, featured comic Jay Bilstein, and CY interview on Christian.